Hey, good afternoon, everybody. I uh, hope you'll excuse me for just a moment as I look back through some notes. I've got to find something I'm going to talk about today. But also want to let you know that uh, my phone might be, I might be getting a text here anywhere in the next 10 to 15 minutes, and I'll tell you why. Um, our church has, uh, has a pretty good sound system and, and, and video production system. And every year, uh, for a reward for the elementary students, what our church does, they, they come and they watch a movie on the big screen. And, and I've talked a little bit about this before, but uh, one of the things that's really important to me about this is the simple fact that we live in a small town. You have to drive, you have to drive 80 miles to get to a movie theater. Well, no, I'm sorry, 40 miles. But uh, years ago, when we first started doing this, the, the school just called and said, hey, uh, I'm hoping uh, that we could come and just let the kids watch a movie as a reward. I said, sure. And so we, we do this and uh, we have the CCLR license and all that. But a little girl on the way out after watching one of those movies, I was holding the door for all the kids to go out and she hugged my leg and she said, thank you, Pastor Dane. I've never been to a movie. Man, that got me. It just really, it really got me. I mean, we take so many things for granted that we can do. And uh, I'm not for sure um, how much of an eternal difference it makes, but uh, we're trying to help some kids have an experience here. So about earlier this morning from 8 o'clock, there was about 150 uh, kids that were here, and there'll be another 150. They're on their way right now. And my wife's in there kind of getting ready to handle the sound and, and the lights and things. So I told her, I said, if something gets out, out of whack, just send me a text, you know, or knock on the door or something. So if, if I suddenly have to walk away for a minute or two, I'll simply say, hey, folks, I just got to fix the sound and audio issue. But I'm just grateful that the school system wants to work with us like we like to do. And once again, we're, we're going to have 400 kids here by the end of the day who watched a movie in our church who, you know, and it's for the it's for a program for them to where they're uh, they're learning a whole lot. The reward being rewarded for something they've done. So, hey, thanks for joining me today. And I'm, I'm calling today Technology Trails and Traps. It could also be called uh, Triumphs and, 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 and Trials and, and who knows who, what else it could be. And uh, if I could get a show of hands, I would, but I'm sure every one of you probably has a smart device. Uh, it's harder and harder. Um, I know there's still a few holdouts on the flip phones. And I remember the days not too long ago when I told my fit kids, I will never, I will never be texting anybody. And now most of how I communicate with people is, drum roll, text. Uh, most of our missionaries, most of our uh, pastors and friends that, I, that I'm around, that I know, I'm talking to either through FaceTime or videos or, you know, uh, phone calls. And so th things have changed. Um, I'm one of those guys that I check my bank account online, probably, and this is no joke, five times a day. I want to make sure I'm ahead of things. I know when checks should clear. I know I'm watching for this or for that. And I just want to be very, 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 very cautious and careful and watchful uh, because most of us have probably at some time or some point had an issue where there was a question or, or where this charge come from or what was this about? And, and uh, so technology has made us a lot more efficient in a lot of ways. It, it, automation in manufacturing, uh, the ability to do certain jobs with, with those sort of things are really, 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 really a great thing. But the thing we got to remember most importantly is that technology may have made us faster and more productive, but it's done nothing to our moral quality. Having a cell phone doesn't make you a more patient human being. You know, what's wrong with the Wi-Fi? What can I get this? I'll, I'll, you know how we all are. Uh, it's that drive through microwave uh, technology ideology that says we should have it and we should have it now. And I will tell you, I'm grateful for Wi-Fi. I'm grateful for um, I'm grateful for more than dial up now, because what we had before, as many of you know and remember, it was horribly slow. It was like going back to the 19, 19. Uh, let me just pick a, a century. No one's been born. in. It was like going back to the, the 1820s. And uh, you didn't have a, you didn't have a, an ox or a cow to, to pull your plow. Uh, and now we got. We've got tractors that are that are pulling them, you know, driving themselves and driverless cars. And Elon Musk talking about a brain chip implant. Uh, someone sent me an article um, by a lady, I believe, in the Los Angeles area, who has written extensively. She just shares a video about uh, about Elon Musk. And I, what I've said, folks, is jury's still out to me. Um, when you, if anybody, you know, people who have too much power 
I'm, I'm thankful when they're when they're honest and they're kind. Uh, but even Nebuchadnezzar had to be humbled. So, but there's an article about him, or a video up about you know who he is, what he does, uh, whether it's I was dressed at Christmas or, or whatever. Um, all I know is this: there's a world out there that wants to do as much as it can to increase your speed at doing things. But I hope that you'll use technology in a way that glorifies the Lord. Saw so today also that the, the porn addiction took off after the lockdown showed up. Also, the number of websites being hit, the number of websites that are pornographic. Uh, uh, just so many other things that are happening out there with technology. Yes, uh, electric cars are a grand and glorious thing if technology and the environment and the, and the structure that we have can actually maintain them. So nonetheless, a whole lot's going on. A whole lot's going on. So I'm not going to endorse people or situations. You mostly know how I am. But I want to talk about uh, AI today. I want to, I want to talk about uh, the, digital, the digital things that are going on because I believe that slowly but surely, just as they, if you boil the frog in water, it dies, we are being put into literally a digital prison every single day. More and more technology comes out, more and more uh, invasive technology. I mean, you've got refrigerators that can tell you when you're out of milk. You've got appliances that will talk to you. I don't want my dryer talking to me, but that's just me. Uh, also, in the, in the ideas of the mark of the beast uh, ideology, social credit scores. Uh, and once again, as I've said, one of the biggest concerns I have about technology is Technology has made us more productive. It's made us faster, but it's not. It has not made us better humans. We're not more kind. We're not more patient. We're not more giving. In many ways, we're not more Christ-like in many in many regards as well. So even if you're going to have technology in your life, make sure that you are using that technology for the Lord, and that means. Letting somebody check your, where you're going. Let somebody see your history on your browser. Let somebody know what you're doing, what you're looking at. Um, be accountable in those in that regards. All right, well, let's talk just about a few things. Let's talk about, first of all, facial recognition. I had somebody ask me about doing this several months ago, and I kind of put it on the calendar, and I began to look and study research and realize that, man, there's a whole lot of stuff going on. And I also will tell you this. I don't know if you know about it, but there's something called a Faraday cage a faraday bag i have several faraday bags and uh and uh, i've got a friend who kind of who, who uses them quite a bit too um and some others and I, i've got a, a friend out of state that i communicate with from time to time and uh, we th- we just did a practice session with tracking and you can put something in a faraday bag and it's gone you can, you're off the grid so to speak so i highly recommend if you feel the need to get one get one they're they're a lot easier price than they were uh, I'm not saying you have to, you should, or you must. I'm just saying, pray about it, see what you think, okay? All right. We're hearing all these. I'm, I'm going to throw some ideas out there. An international vaccine passport, a digital identity, a social credit score, a central bank digital currency. That, that's called CBDC. All these things together are going to literally form a system that will lock you down. Now, we know that that's coming. We, we know that that is coming, okay? Matter of fact, facial recognition is becoming more and more part of our airports. Uh, I, I made some phone calls yesterday just to make sure that, you know, that the airport I'm going to, uh, at least in Nashville tomorrow, uh, doesn't require me to have facial recognition to get in or get out. I've got my license and I've got all the paperwork I need and my boarding passes and stuff. But, you know, I, I'm, I'm leery to let somebody take a digital picture of my face and scan my irises and my nose hairs and everything else that goes with that, but nonetheless. But here's the scary thing. By the end of 2022, are you aware that just a few weeks from now, there will be one billion, yeah, that's billion with a B, one billion data-collecting surveillance cameras in the world, and those cameras are all connected to the Internet. They're all connected to uh, artificial intelligence and those sort of things. And guess what? They are tracking, they're watching, they're this, they're that. That's kind of scary, isn't it? One billion. Billion. So we have cell phones, we have smart appliances, everything. You know, every time you walk in a store, you're, pro- you're probably being tracked in one sense. We're seeing where, where criminals are now stalking people using the, the air tags. The Apple AirTags. So AI is going to play an even more and an even more important part in some of the things that are going on and happening. 
okay? But our digital identity, and that's what it's all going to, will become a digital identity. And so the CB, the, the central banking, these digital currencies that, that are coming out there, it will give a lot more people the opportunity to declare what you can and cannot buy. What if they say, hey, you know, we don't like the idea you're tithing to your church. So uh, sorry, that money's not going to clear. Now, don't you say, oh, that will never happen. Hey, they're tracking gun and ammo purchases. What's next? What what next? You know, are they going to, when, when you buy a car and you're checking to get a loan or whatever, are they going to say, hey, there's another car at a lot closer, you know, further away that, that you can get cheaper. I don't think they're going to do that to help you. But just the whole thing, just like Daryl said, it makes you dependent. All of these things that are happening make you absolutely dependent upon the technology. And so there's this guy, this, this, this idea that, hey, it'll make us more safe. It'll make us, it'll, it'll make us more connected. It'll, it'll, it'll uh, you know, it will ultimately become a tool for mass control and really deal with a lot of your, a lot of your securities, individually, privately. A Faraday bag is something that basically keeps scanning and the ability to, to track what's in that bag or your phone. Uh, you basically put something, your phone or iPad or computer in that Faraday bag, shut that thing up, and you disappear, so to speak. Um, I wish they had a Faraday bag for people, but, you know, Next to a body bag, that's about the only way you can you can you can check out totally. But nonetheless, uh, data collection also includes cameras, audio recording devices, and cell phones, automobiles. Uh, think about this: probably everywhere you go, you're being. I, I talked to somebody who sprays. Uh, is like a uh, a commercial bug guy who who sprays, and he says, you know, he told me he said this basically. He said, anywhere I go, I'm under the idea that I'm probably being recorded. Because that's the world in which we live. That's the world in which we live. So who knows? But, but all these different things are out there. Everything is collecting and sharing information on you and on me. And then you, you get to this digital identity. And the World Economic Forum, um, they, they've added a whole lot to this idea with the, with the passports and all these other things that, that are going on. But there's this new social contract idea that's out there, and we've heard of China doing that. And you're you you are you are guarded and guided by your credit score. You are literally kind of told, "Hey, what about you know? You can't buy this, or you can't purchase this, or here's your rating, here's your thing." So we've got to really be careful. We got to really be careful what we own and how much how much we uh, uh, of that stuff we get. How much look? You and I can give a whole lot of power to the iWatch or the iPhone or the iPad or anything else that we have around us if we're not careful. So we need to use a lot more common sense. And I say that because, okay, just here's some, here's some places. Here's some places where di a digital identity is going to one day be required. Telecommunications, e-government, social platforms, e-commerce, humanitarian response, travel and mobility, food and sustainability, financial services, and health care. Health care. I have a, a MacBook that I use, and when I log on to the IRS or the Social Security website, I use my fingerprint, I scan on, I get on, but I still get sent a, 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 a code I have to use to get on. And I'm thankful that, that groups like that use all the all the uh, the layering of security to make sure that you are who you say you are. However, when we start looking at the world in which we live, we begin to realize that things are changing very, very quickly. And I don't want this to be all about all about the mark of the beast and that. Because look, folks, I'm going to tell you, I'm wearing an insulin pump that I'm grateful for. I know they're working on they're, they're working on uh, transplantable pancreases that are you know they're working on implant pumps and things. I'm thankful that technology has brought us where we have. Uh, most of the medicines that we have, most of the medical technologies that we have, have made life better. Literally, literally made life better. But at the same time, anything that's used for good can be used for evil, and that's where we see it. And so as they talk more and more about a digital identity and facial recognition and credit score, and also, look, my carbon footprint is none of your business. In all reality, right? You know, if, if I'm going to get in my car and drive to town, 
uh, that should not affect my credit score. But if a bank starts saying, hey, the next time you want to buy a car, we may not loan to you because you're, you're, you're driving to town four days a week instead of two. And we think you should, only do, you should take care of all your – and all of a sudden, the, the control that we've given technology is going to allow ask somebody else to say, hey, I know you want to go in town and get breakfast today, but you already ate there yesterday, so wait one more day. And people say, oh, that will never happen. Wow. The real deal is this. It's about zero trust. Now, I want, to, I want to show you something. This is from Metro News. World's first artificial worm, womb, worm, sorry about that, womb facility is creepy glimpse of pregnancy in the future. And this is from this Tuesday. I'm just going to show you kind of the headline there. You can kind of look at it. And it shows this baby sitting in a, in a dish. Now, let me just read this, okay? This is the world's first artificial womb facility, and it lets you choose a baby's characteristics from a menu. Now, look, they didn't have that on the Jetsons, folks, and I think most of you know that. Ectolife, able to grow 30,000 babies a year, is said to be based on over 50 years of groundbreaking, groundbreaking scientific research. Now, let me stop right here before I go further. I am thankful, I am thankful for in vitro fertilization. I am thankful for some of the incredible things that they're doing in the world of pregnancy. I am thankful for some of the things they're doing with technology that has helped people who have struggled and strived and struggled and strived to have a baby. I'm grateful that those technologies are out there. So I'm not saying, first of all, that those sort of technologies are bad. Let's keep reading. The concept is the brainchild of Berlin-based Hashim Al-Ghali, a biotechnologist and science communicator. He says the facilities would allow infertile couples to conceive a baby and become the true biological parents of their own offspring. Okay, A so-called elite package would allow you to genetically engineer the embryo before implanting it into the artificial womb. Everything from eye and hair color to strength, height, and intelligence can be chosen and inherited. Genetic diseases can be avoided. Now, many of you are going to be familiar with the term I'm about to use. We are in a brave new world. And Alex Huxley literally saw the kind of world that was coming. Hashim explains introducing Ectolife, the world's first artificial worm for I don't know why I keep saying worm, folks, but I'm sorry. Artificial womb facility, which powered is powered entirely by renewable energy. Okay. Um, I want to know what kind of renewable energy that is, because the fusion that they just talked about, uh, I don't think it's the big, the, as big a deal as they're trying to say it was, but nonetheless. According to the World Health Organization, around 300,000 women die from pregnancy complications. Ectolife artificial womb is designed to alleviate human suffering and reduce the chances of C-sections. With Ectolife, premature births and C-sections will be a thing of the past. Hashim says it also offers a solution for women who have had their uterus surgically removed due to cancer or other complications. It can also help countries that are suffering from severe population decline, including Japan, Bulgaria, South Korea, and many others. And I, I'm, it, what, look, when I read news, I read, with, I read with a very critical eye. Why do they mention those specific countries? Japan, Bulgaria, and South Korea. Is it just because there's a severe population decline there? Or are there people already working to work in those nations with this technology? Okay. Hashim believes the technology is available already and only ethical constraints are holding the concept back from reality. Well, what that means is this. Somebody's already doing this. Do we really believe they've not cloned humans? I believe they probably have. Dorothy wasn't the only sheep, the only animal that's been cloned. I know they're, they're they're trying to bring back the woolly mammoths from the permafrost. I know they're trying they're trying to do some incredible things, and I understand there's probably good scientific merit in it. But when you start messing with the human embryo and you start messing with what God made and created specifically, there's trouble. He says every single feature mentioned in the concept is 100% science based. Now, in the last two years, how many of you have heard follow the science, follow the science, follow the science? 
That's why I'm skeptical. It's already been achieved. No, listen, once again, every single feature mentioned in the in this concept is 100% science engine based, and it's already been achieved by scientists and engineers. Read between the lines. They're basically saying this is already going on. We just need to basically say, let's do it. Let's take all the ethical restraints off and let's just do this. The only thing left is building a prototype by combining all the features into a single device. In terms of time frame, it really depends on the ethical guidelines. Right now, research on human embryos is not allowed beyond 14 days. Right now. Once again, read between the lines. This, this article is framing us up for what will come next. If these ethical restrictions are relaxed, I give it 10 to 15 years before ectolife becomes widely used everywhere. Add to that five years of public awareness and education to help people become more receptive to technology. The facility features 75 highly equipped labs. The facility, okay? They're talking about it as if it is here, it is here, it is here. This guy is saying five, you know, five, 10, 15 years. The, the, it was able to accommodate up to 400 growth pods or artificial wombs. Every pod is designed to replicate the exact conditions that exist inside the mother's uterus. A single building, a single building can incubate up to 30,000 lab grown babies per year. I want you to listen to that sentence I just read. Listen to this closely. A single building can incubate up to 30,000 lab grown babies per year. The pods are equipped with a screen that displays real-time data on the developmental process of the baby. The data can also be viewed via a phone app. EctoLife allows your baby to develop in an infection-free environment. The pods are made of materials that prevent germs from sticking to their surfaces. And every growth pod features sensors that can monitor your baby's, your baby's vital signs, including heartbeat, temperature, blood pressure, breathing rate, and oxygen saturation. The artificial intelligence-based system also monitors the physical features of your baby and reports any potential genetic abnormalities. Wow. There's an app that also allows you to have a playlist that your baby can listen to of your, your voice singing or talking. You gain familiar with your voice. You know, there are, some thing, there are some things that you don't mess with. There are some things you simply don't do. And there are some things that if you're going to step into it, you, you know, Jesus even said, if you're going to build a bunch of barns, you better count the costs. I really, really hope that the biological world that is becoming more intrusive and invasive and the technology world that's becoming more intrusive and invasive has some boundaries and some guidelines and some guardrails. And folks, that's where you and I have to, in our homes right now, in our lives, even in our vehicles, we have to make sure that we limit, we limit what technology how technology will control you. Once again, I'm thankful that my pump is communicating with my phone and it's telling me what I'm doing glucose wise. It's telling me when I need to take a bolus or a shot. It's, take, it's, it's helping me to understand so I can stay in the range I'm supposed to take. I'm thankful for machines and, 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 and equipment that people have created and built uh, in our hospitals and in, in our world that helps us. I'm thankful that I can look on my phone and realize that, you know, what, what I have with certain markets and things. I can find out how much silver is right now if I want or how much gold is. Or I can find out what the best interest rate is between the two banks in my town. I mean, I mean, you know, I can find out what, what, what the latest sale is and how many restaurants on the way to the airport today. What matters, though, is that we do not let it take control of us, you know. And that's why having some, some backup communication uh, there is no backup from my pump except syringes and insulin. But I, but, but already I've gone from about you know, 50% of the time in the range I'm supposed to be to 85 to 90% in range. So I'm thankful for that. 
But I realized that if I have to go back on shots, it's going to be a whole. I took a lot of shots. I took eight to 10 shots a day on purpose to have better glucose controls. But I'll tell you what, with everything, hey, can, you know, does, does religion have some good things about it? Absolutely. But ask people about David Koresh and, and the Moonies and, uh, you know, and, and, and uh, the, uh, the situation that happened there in, in Guyana, the Guyana tragedy, Jim Jones. I mean, that was religion that got way off track. And that's why you and I have to have more than religion. We have to have that personal relationship with Jesus. And we have to make sure that we are not letting things become controlling of us. And I think it's okay to do a, it's okay to do a, an assessment of how much technology, you know, is, is in our life. What do we need to settle down from and, and walk away from? Uh, what do we need to not be communicating with? I do my best to return emails and phone calls as I can. But I also know that I could be on my phone 24-7. My wife will tell you that she has to like, Dana, you put your phone down. She's like, well, there's this, there's that. And so I, I struggle from time to time. I'll be honest with you. So what I do is I, I work to make sure, okay, how much time, you know, I've got an app on my phone that tells me how much time I spend on my phone or my technology each day. It tells me when I'm above or when I'm down. And I've made up my mind that I don't really want to spend more than an hour and a half. You missing that, folks, look, between emails, I, most of my emails I get on my phone, technology things, with my pump. All of us probably spend an, at least an hour each day dealing with those things. But I've said, okay, Lord, I want to, I'm, I'm going to, what's the time? How much is too much? Oh, Lord, show me a number, put that on there. And I, I will just tell you, in the last month and a half, only one day that I go over that line. Okay. But there's, we need to do an assessment of what we're doing with technology because, look, and I, I don't want to get into a whole lot of it, but the reason I'm, the reason this is called technology trails and traps is because if we're not careful, technology will take over. And uh, if you've ever, ever, there's a book called Make Room, Make Room, and it became the movie Soylent Green. Um, if you're ever, ever on Jeopardy and they say, what book was the movie Soylent Green made from? Say, make room, make room, and you'll get you know, hopefully it'll be the Daily Double or something. But I'll tell you what. We know that we know that there's one day going to be a mark of the beast. And how, how digital, how technology advanced it will be, I'm not really concerned about. But what concerns me is the fact that when you take that mark, it's not just so you can buy and sell. It becomes an act of worship. And the thing is, we begin to see the, 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 the root problem, the core root problem with technology is it always wants to be bigger than it is right now, and it wants to have more control than we should give it. And I'll agree it is a distraction, as Becky just said, but more than a distraction. If we're not careful, it, it, will, it will impact our situational awareness. I, I've seen enough people driving crazy and with the past and realize oh man they're on their phone they're texting or doing crazy stuff because we got to know we got to see this last tiktok or this last meme or the last this or that and that's you know speaking of tiktok uh, you got a lot of government agencies that are saying hey this may not be the fun thing we think it is in other words folks there's a huge system out there and that's what it is it's a system and that system has sinister backgrounds. It has a sinister agenda. It has sinister ideas. It has sinister, sinister things. You know, um, I'm going to continue to be on Facebook and continue to say what I say and do what I do. And when the door closes, we'll move to something else. But here's the thing, folks. Technology is going to continue to get a hold of every single part of your life. And eventually, there will be nothing that you can do or I can do without having some type of connection, phone, device, whatever. So until we get there, let's make sure that we are what we are making. Let's make sure that we are doing everything that we need to do best that we can pray about it i'm going to encourage you to assess folks i'm challenging you to assess all that you do with technology i just got a, a i just got a message from my wife that there's about 200 kids ready to pull into our church and, and watch a movie 
and we're grateful we can we can provide that opportunity for them and connect with the schools. Uh, so technology is making a good thing for us. It helps the schools and helps us to make a connection. But uh, don't let it become the God of your life. All right, folks, don't let it become the God of your life. Hey, thanks a lot for being a part of this. Uh, Sunday, I will be in, in uh, Phoenix, Arizona. I'll be preaching at the Revolution uh, Revolution Midtown Church at 10 o'clock. And then that afternoon from 3 o'clock to 4.30, I will be in the cafeteria at the American Indian College, uh, Sagu American Indian College, uh, for like a question and answer, just meet and greet and talk. And, and so I would love to meet as many of you folks that are out there. I know we've got, I, we've got several artists that are coming. Can't wait to see you all and meet you all, uh, be a part of that world out there. And also, most importantly, do my daughter. I'm so excited uh, to, to welcome a new son-in-law to my family. And, uh, and after having three kids married in 16 months, <laughs> we're going to take a couple days and enjoy ourselves while we're out there. So thanks for being a part of this today, folks. Uh, I'll be talking to you tomorrow before I head to the airport. And then Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday will be from the sunny land of Phoenix, Arizona. So, hey, God bless, folks. Have a great rest of the day.